So, what exactly is ophthalmology? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Wogu and I'm here with Zabralter Medical, a not-for-profit organization centered around connecting Black scientists to communities of color. I am currently a first-year resident and will be completing my specialty training in ophthalmology. I would describe ophthalmology as one of the best specialties in medicine, but it is also a specialty that is centered around the diagnosis and treatment of a variety of ocular diseases. You know, a lot of people think the eye is small, but it's actually one of the most intricate and detailed organs within the body. We diagnose and treat conditions ranging from corneal diseases, retina conditions as well. We also treat eye cancers. I know there's a lot of confusion about the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist. So an optometrist is also an eye doctor. They're able to do comprehensive exams, fit and prescribe glasses for people. But during those exams, they may see something that warrants a referral to ophthalmology for further workup and treatment. Also, ophthalmology is a surgical subspecialty. So we're eye surgeons and we perform a variety of different eye surgeries as well for our patients. How did you decide on ophthalmology as a career choice? I always describe my journey towards ophthalmology as a journey of fate. During the third year of medical school, I did a lot of different rotations and I liked different aspects of specific specialties, but I could never find a specific one that I could see myself doing a career in. And when it came to our surgery rotation, we were able to do two weeks of a surgical subspecialty. And when I was making my schedule, I saw the opportunity to do ophthalmology and thought to myself, hmm, like we didn't get that much exposure to ophthalmology during the first two years of medical school. And I thought to myself, this would be the opportunity just to explore that. And I remember after the first week of the rotation, basically falling in love with this specialty. I love the emphasis in which ophthalmology puts on the physical exam to make uh, diagnoses. And I saw how happy and how genuine the residents were and I admired that. I also really love the impact that ophthalmology has on its patients. I think as human beings, we take our vision for granted because we see every day. But for some people, it's not entirely that. They have a different story. And being able to help prevent vision loss or even possibly save someone's vision is a humbling experience and it's something that I, I really take to heart. And I think that ophthalmology also gives me the opportunity to give back to our people. There are a lot of systemic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol that really impact black people. And I think that being able to do ophthalmology, these patients oftentimes don't understand that these systemic conditions can affect their vision. So as a black ophthalmologist, I'm able to not only help diagnose and treat these conditions, but I'm able to counsel and educate these patients on lifestyle changes and things that they can do to help prevent further vision loss. Let's listen to Miss Jeanette, a diabetic patient with eye disease, as she shares her story. Hi, I'm 61 years old and I've been a diabetic for over 20 years. And it, in the course of being a diabetic, it has affected my vision and also my kidneys. It started when I was 19 years old, affecting my eyes. I had to have emergency eye care surgery. It also affected my kidneys. I encourage you to get an eye exam at least once a year. As we heard from Ms. Jeanette, your eyes matter. So Dr. Wogu, what's the compensation for ophthalmologists in the nation? The median salary for ophthalmology is around 300000 And I think ophthalmology is so attractive to so many people, not only because of the compensation, but because of the lifestyle. Most ophthalmologists, they work nine to five jobs, Monday through Friday, especially if you're working in private practice. And most ophthalmologists are... I think genuinely pretty happy and I think that that's what makes it so competitive but also very attractive to many medical students when they decide what specialty that they want to go into. In terms of demographic breakdown, I believe about 3% of ophthalmologists are Black or African American and I hope to actually see a change in that. I think that in all medical specialties, we should try to aim to match our demographics to the race population of 
the patients that we're serving. So I think that if the American population is 15% Black African American, we should try to aim to have 15% of doctors within a specific specialty to match that. Can you speak about mentorship and how it helped you specifically? I think mentorship takes a lot of different forms, and I think it's important to have mentorship at different levels of training. So if you wanted to get into ophthalmology, I think it's important to have a mentor who's a resident within that specialty. You could possibly have a mentor who's a fellow. And then of course, having one or two mentors who are attendings within ophthalmology as well will be really helpful in your journey towards that specialty. For me, I think I've had a lot of mentors uh, throughout the process. One, when I first decided to go into ophthalmology, I talked to my Dean of Students. And although she wasn't an ophthalmologist, she was able to connect me to the right people to talk to. And one person I thought that was really quintessential in me getting into ophthalmology and helping me throughout the process was the program director that was associated with the ophthalmology program with my medical school. And I thought that she was really helpful in my journey towards ophthalmology because I never thought that ophthalmology was an option for me mainly because I decided on going into ophthalmology very late, which was like third year of medical school, as well as I didn't think I had the scores for ophthalmology uh, when I took my step one and step two exam. But when I sat down with that program director, she didn't look at me as a disadvantaged case. She sat down with me and discussed how can we work and use your abilities and your qualities to get you into ophthalmology. And I was amazed how readily available she made herself to me. There was a time that we talked for close to, I think, one to two hours just about my personal statement and how passionate I was about ophthalmology. And I think it's really rare to meet people like that. And just having mentors who are that invested in you, I think will really help you along the way. Another set of mentors that I had was through this program called Rap Venable. And Rad Venable is a research program for underrepresented minorities who are interested in ophthalmology. It's a research competition in which medical students as well as residents present their research. But it's way more than just a research competition. It's a great networking opportunity as well. It's amazing to look around and see other people who look like you who are literally practicing the specialty that you hope to be a part of. And through this opportunity, you meet people who are really going to support you and are going to vouch for you during that match um, and the selection process of getting into residency as well. So Dr. Wogu, who will do well in ophthalmology? I think someone who would succeed in ophthalmology is someone who sees themselves as a lifelong learner and someone who is hungry for knowledge. And I say this because during medical school, we don't get that much exposure to ophthalmology. And then once you transition into residency, it's like that analogy of drinking through a fire hose again. You have to be able to put it on yourself to continuously read every day, to hopefully learn more about your patients. But at the same time, you're taking care of patients on a daily basis. And I can understand how this can be a bit overwhelming at times. I think it's also important to be patient, especially when you're first starting residency, because there's a lot of different instruments and gadgets within ophthalmology that take some time to learn. I remember even as a medical student trying to see the retina for the first time, it took me multiple rotations in ophthalmology to see the retina. Um, and even now as a first year resident, I'm still learning on a day-to-day -day basis every single time I pick up a different instrument. Also, I think the physical exam can be a bit challenging. It's not always as easy for the patient to be able to be compliant with positioning. So as an ophthalmologist, you have to be really patient with the patient and be able to reposition them and take time with them and continuously reorient them to be able to get the best exam as possible. What are your final words for those wondering if they can get into ophthalmology? For anybody with the question of can I, I would challenge you to follow up that question with why not. I think that if you're really passionate about something, I think that anything is attainable. And just because it's delayed definitely does not mean that it's denied. If you're interested in ophthalmology, it's important to get exposed early on. But even if you decide later on, I think that ophthalmology is still something that's attainable. So if you're interested in it, the 
first step would be to try to get as much exposure to ophthalmology as possible. And that comes with reaching out to people within the ophthalmology department at your school to be able to shadow and get some more exposure. And I think that getting involved in research is really important too, because I think that for me, a lot of the knowledge that I got from ophthalmology came from the rotations that I did, but also doing research on my own and with a mentor also exposed me to different fields within ophthalmology that currently actually interest me and also expanded my knowledge of ophthalmology in general. What's your hope for the future in medicine? Personally, I love the amount of black excellence and the increase of diversity that I'm seeing within ophthalmology over the last couple of years. And I really do appreciate the efforts done by programs like Rad Venable. There's also the mentorship in ophthalmology program by the AAO, American Academy of Ophthalmology, that I know a lot of my colleagues have went through that they say also help them and support them on their journey towards ophthalmology. As I said earlier, only about 3% of ophthalmologists are Black or African American, and I hope that by the time I even graduate from residency, that that number will increase because that as Black ophthalmologists, we have a duty and service to our patients. And I think when our patients see a doctor that looks like them, it is a completely different experience. There's a level of trust that is established from that as well. And I think that our patients will be better served if we increase diversity in ophthalmology as well. Thank you, Dr. Wogu, for paying it forward.